How is it going guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to be working on something that I'm actually really excited about because I don't think a ton of people have done this and there's definitely not a lot of videos showing you exactly how it's done. So what we're going to be doing is retrofitting a 17 plus 86 instrument cluster with the digital display into my FRS. Not only does this look a lot better, it also allows us to see the oil temps, G meter and a bunch of other useful information that we didn't previously have access to. Now, this isn't a completely 100% plug and play install, uh, especially if you have a turnkey car like myself. If you have a push to start car, it's a little bit easier. It's one less step, but there, you can't just toss this into your car and expect it to work. There is a bit of a process that goes into it. So I'm gonna walk you guys through all of the steps that are necessary. Uh, first off, you need to source a cluster. Uh, unfortunately, you can't just walk into your local dealer and pick one of these up unless you're lucky. They usually ask you for a VIN to verify that you have a 17 plus and need one. So what, did I, what I ended up doing was scouring the junkyards online and I was actually able to pick this up for about 140 bucks shipped, which I think was a great deal. Uh, I've seen these go on Facebook Marketplace for about three, $400. So I'm really happy about that. Uh, I sent it off to geraldjustprojects.com to get the mileage uh, corrected to reflect the actual mileage on the FRS. So that matched up. And then he also provided us with another essential part that is needed for the install that I'll cover in a little bit. But we're gonna hop inside the car, uninstall the old cluster. We'll get this one plugged in, make sure everything lights up, turns on and make sure it works. And then we can move on to the next step. Inside the car, we're gonna look on the underside of the instrument hood here. There's gonna be a hole right in the center that's gonna have a Phillips head screw that we're gonna remove. That's gonna release this trim piece on top here that we're gonna remove. Uh, what we wanna do is pull it up and towards the back of the car. It'll probably help if you have a trim panel removal tool to get in the edges and pop that out. Uh, of course, I don't currently have one of those, so we're just gonna have to finesse this. There we go. Underneath that piece, there's gonna be two more Phillips head screws that we're gonna remove. Next, we're gonna remove the trim panel around the radio. Uh, this just pops straight out. Uh, it's a little bit easier for me because my Garmin catalyst mount is on here, so I can just pull it out using that. But again, this is where a trim panel removal tool will come in handy. That's gonna allow us to release this piece here that's in front of the cluster. This houses the odometer, trip, and display button. Again, we're gonna to wanna to pull this straight towards the back of the car on both sides. There we go. All right, so we don't need to take this completely out. Uh, this gives us ample room to get the cluster out and the new one installed. So now we can remove the old cluster. We just need to pull it towards the back of the car. There's two clips on the back side that's holding it in place, as well as a connector that we're gonna need to disconnect once we get it popped out here. Okay, so I'm just gonna reach back here it's not too difficult to remove that connector. Then we can pull it straight up and out. We'll slide the new cluster into place. Reconnect the harness on the back here. That should just clip in. And then we can press it back into the slot. And now before I put anything back, uh, we are gonna just run through real quick and I'm gonna put the car into the on position just to make sure all the lights turn on. Oh, my wipers are on. And I can see that all of the lights and the display works correctly. So that is awesome to see. Uh, but here's the thing. Uh, without any steering wheel controls, I have no way of controlling that digital menu. And when I try to start the car, nothing happens. So that is, uh, those are gonna be the next steps that we are going to take care of. Uh, I'm gonna take this back out of the car uh, before I do any of that and give you guys kind of a side-by-side -side, uh, comparison from the old one to the new one, uh, and then we can get back into it. 
Got the new cluster on the left and the old one on the right. The background on the new one is just a matte black, which uh, I'm a huge fan of, as opposed to the kind of scale pattern on the old one. Uh, you can see the color scheme is essentially the same. So we've got the white background on the tack with dark gray numbers. The needles are exactly the same. The tack on the new one is a little bit more compressed because of that digital display, uh, but the numbers are a little bit, bit a little bit bigger, which I think looks just a tiny bit better. The speedometer looks the same. Uh, you can see that the rings that go around the speedometer tack and the digital display are silver on the new one. And on the old one, just that tack is silver with the kind of dimples that go around and accent uh, the edge there. And obviously the biggest difference is the digital display on the right side, uh, whereas the old one has the fuel and temp gauge. So uh, that is a side-by-side -side comparison. Uh, like I said, I think this new one looks a whole lot better. So I'm excited to get this in there and get everything working. All right, so we've got two different problems, right? The first one being the car does not start with the new cluster installed, and that is because on turnkey cars, it's part of the immobilizer system. On a push to start car, it should start right back up and it shouldn't be a problem whatsoever. Either way, we're both gonna run into the second problem, which is not having a way to control that menu on the digital display without any steering wheel controls. And that is where this little guy comes in. This is a kit from Gerald Just Projects, as I mentioned before. This allows you to control that menu and you can mount this little control board either on the key, uh, the key blank cover if you have a push to start or in between your traction control buttons if you have a turnkey car, which is what we are gonna be doing. Comes with the board itself, which has a joystick and select button to control the menu. Comes with a harness that we're gonna plug into the connector that plugs into the back of the uh, cluster. And then this little 3D printed housing that replaces the cover uh, of the traction control buttons. Now, I'm not a big fan of the mismatched black since I have the silver buttons, so I may try, try to find a way of fitting this into the existing cover. Should just need to Dremel, cut out, and drill a little bit, but we should be able to make it work. So we're gonna take care of this first, and then we'll get into the whole not starting issue. We're gonna remove the traction control buttons first so that we can get the control board fitted into the middle slot. We just need to remove the shift knob and pull this trim piece up. Once the shift knob is off, we're just gonna reach into the shifter trim here and pull it up. You wanna pull up on the front side here first and then kind of pull it towards the front of the car, like so. There we go. And then you can pull the shift boot off of the shifter. And then on the back, we'll disconnect the traction control buttons. And then you're gonna see two Phillips head screws holding the buttons in place. So go ahead and remove those. And then this just pops out. Got the traction control buttons off of the car. We need to remove this back section here, this gray section to get to the back of the uh, center cover to remove it. So what I did was stuck a small flathead screwdriver into this slot right here and this slot to release these little retaining clips. Uh, there's two on each side right there. So I've already done that. So I should be able to just pull this piece out like so. And then there's a little rubber piece here I will take out, and if we take a look inside here, you can see two kind of tabs uh, in the center cover that will need to pull towards the center of the button. So I'll be able to do that with my nail here for one. Okay, so while I'm pulling that towards the center, I'm kind of pushing uh, the cover out away uh, with my other two fingers on my left hand here. So now I've got that one. Released, I'm gonna take a flathead screwdriver and release the one on the right side. And then I should be able to pull the cover off, like so. I did end up using the black cover that was supplied because it was just a whole lot more convenient. I'm sure you can use the silver cover that is already on the buttons with some modification, but for the sake of this video, we are gonna be using the black cover. So I got that installed. I have the traction control buttons reinstalled into the shifter trim, and now we just need to route the wiring uh, back to the connector that connects to the back of the cluster. 
So I've got to remove some parts uh, in the center console area to allow us to route the wiring back to that connector. We're gonna remove the two bottom panels on both sides of the center console. They just pop right out. So just pull away from the center of the car carefully. Like so, we'll set those aside. There we go. And that allows us to reach underneath and pop out the kind of tray area here, uh, the cubby hole. And then we'll disconnect our USB and auxiliary plug here. And now that gives us access to this area. And now I'm going to remove the radio next. To remove the radio, there's gonna be four 10 millimeter bolts, two on each side that we'll need to remove. And then we should be able to slide it out and unplug it. So we've got a couple plugs on the back here that we will just unplug. These really can go only go in only one way, so we should be able to get everything plugged back in once we're done. There we go. Now that we have the radio out of the way, I'm gonna show you guys how I have this routed. So you can see the cable here comes out of the traction control buttons and it goes down to the right side of the shifter. I kind of just follow along the harnesses on the right side there and then they go into the cubby hole uh, and you can just reach through here and feed it up into where the radio is. And from the radio area, you can just go over to the left side and sneak it through to this connector here. I'm gonna show you guys how to get the pins installed. So this is the connector that goes to the cluster. On each side, you're gonna see uh, kind of a slot with a uh, tab that you need to press in with some sort of pick tool. And as I do this, you'll see that that section right there kind of pops out a little bit and you need to do that for both sides. So I'll try and get this side. There we go. So now that I have both sides, you can kind of tell that this long section here popped out just the tiniest bit. So that is going to allow you to remove and insert pins into the connector. Uh, in our case, we're gonna be inserting the pins. So now if we flip this over and on the same side as where this kind of slot is that lifted up, this top row here with that side on top is where we're gonna be inserting the pins from the connector. I'm not gonna do so now because it's going to uh, block the view, but on this top row here, you're gonna see on the left side, there are three open slots right here. So the furthest one to the left here, the open slot is pin number 23. The red cable goes into that pin and then three away from that, which is pin 26. That is going to be the gray cable that inserts into there. And then three away from that, which is pin 29, you're going to insert the black cable. So again, from the left side to the right side, it goes red cable into pin 23, gray cable into pin 26, and then black cable into pin 29. And these pins can only go in uh, one way, so it shouldn't be too difficult to get these into the right location. I say that now, but let's see uh, if I can actually do it. And then once you insert it, you should hear a little click, an audible click if you listen closely. So I've got the red one in there. Now I need to get this gray one. But once you hear that click, you shouldn't be able to pull it out. Got the last one, which is this black one. Okay, heard it click. So once we have those cables inserted into the correct locations, you're going to press this long slot back into its place. 
and I think that gray one is still in the way. There we go. So now you can see it's flat again and those are locked into place. So now we should be good to go to install the cluster and get this plugged in and we will be able to control the menu using the new uh, joystick and button. The new cluster is in place, everything is reinstalled. The control module works perfectly. I'm able to cycle through all the different menus and options and such, but we still are not able to start the car. So to solve that issue, I picked up basically a knockoff TechStream a cable that comes with the software as well on Amazon, and I've got the software loaded onto my laptop. Now this is a MacBook, but I have Windows uh, loaded on here uh, through bootcamp. So you do need a Windows operating system to run the TechStream software. But once you've got all that figured out, this cable connects to your laptop and then connects to your car using the OBD2 port. And this allows you to reprogram the cluster to allow the car to start. So I'll walk you guys through that process as well. This is the screen you should see once you have your laptop connected to the car using the TechStream cable. What we're gonna click on is the main body here. And then over on the left side, we're gonna click utility. And then you're gonna see that ECU communication ID registration. And we'll click on that. And this is gonna allow you to run through the handshake procedure, which basically connects the cluster to the ECU. So we'll run through these instructions here. It says insert a registered key into the key cylinder and make sure the ignition is in the on position. And that is essentially it. So that was pretty quick and simple. Now, theoretically, and hopefully when I go to start the car, it should start right up. All right, so that is a really good sign. I honestly was not 100% sure that this was gonna work because the, well, it's a really cheap cable. I think the real TechStream cables are hundreds of dollars and this was about $50. So I uh, saved a ton of money there. But yeah, it all works now. I am super happy with it. Everything is installed. Let's take uh, a little bit of time here and go through the different menu options on that digital display. To control the menu, this top section here is the joystick, so you can go up, down, side to side. And then if you press it, that is the select button. And then this button down here is the back button. So when you first start the car, you're gonna get that cool 8.6 animation. Now you can also have Gerald program that to be the BRZ animation if the cluster that you got isn't originally from a BRZ and vice versa. On this first menu here, you can see we've got the fuel economy information. So we've got miles per gallon, average miles per gallon and distance until empty. If I go down, you've got some more trip information and then down one more. This screen gives us our water temp, oil temp and the voltage meter which is essentially what I wanted this digital display for. And then if we go over to the right, we've got a couple G meters. And then if I go down one more, <laughs> this has the power curve here, uh, which is a nice daily reminder of the uh, dreaded torque dip. I don't believe you can do anything to actually change this. Uh, if we go down one more, we've got a lap timer and then go to the right. This is the settings, so you can turn the welcome screen on and off, uh, set to the rev limiter light, turn on the gear selector indicator and all that good stuff. And then this is for any messages or uh, reminders or anything of that sort that the uh, car needs to tell us. But yeah, that is essentially it. That pretty much wraps it up, guys. I am super stoked on how things turned out and that everything works as it should. It might not seem like a huge upgrade to some people, but to me it doesn't. At the end of the day, that's all that matters. If you guys are interested in doing this for yourself, I will leave a link down in, or I will leave links down in the description to everything that I use. Huge shout out to GeraldJustProjects.com for working with me on this and providing the necessary parts. I've also got a few other products from him that I need to get installed on the car, so be on the lookout for that. If you guys have any questions whatsoever, let me know in the comment section down below. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.